What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey, my name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Glendronic 18 year old. Stick around. Okay, so we're looking at the Glendronic 18 year old. This is a very famous whiskey, and uh, there's been a lot of chatter online about this one over the last few years. There's lots of backstory here, lots of opinions, lots of collectors, and even a little bit of controversy. So I guess I'll start by explaining why my 18 year old here isn't actually 18 years old, although I'm sure a lot of you out there already know this part. Uh, between 1996 and 2002, the Glendronic distillery was closed. And after reopening and 18 years had passed since 1996, Glendronic decided to keep going with their 18 year old expression, just as they had done previously with their 12 year old and their 15 year old. As a result, for every year that passed after 2014, the whiskey in our 18 year old bottle effectively got one year older, which means uh, 2015 bottlings were 19 years old, 2016 bottlings were 20 years old, and so on. Uh, the bottle I've got here is from 2017, which would make it a 21 year old. And while our 18 here was going up in years, there was some behind the scenes stuff happening at the Glendronic Distillery. Uh, it was sold to Brown Foreman, I believe in 2017, and the previous owners, one of whom was Billy Walker, who was very famous, uh, set their sights on the Glen Alkey Distillery, which has since become quite famous in and of itself. Back at Glendronic, a new team was brought in to handle things after the sale. Uh, they would also handle things at Ben Riek and Glen Glassa, which are sister distilleries. Uh, most notably among them was Dr. Rachel Barry, the new master distiller, uh, herself quite a well-known figure within the industry. And following the takeover, I think a lot of people became a little bit less enthused about Glendronic. Uh, the profile did change, and I'm sure a lot of people missed the Billy Walker touch. Not only that, I'm sure a lot of people also felt that the brand had become too corporate. Uh, regardless, things kept chugging along mostly without incident for the next few years. And then 2021 came along, and Glendronic decided to make a very controversial move. They decided to start chill filtering their whiskeys. Uh, of course, this is not something that went over well with fans. Lots of chatter online, lots of noise, lots of anger, I think justifiably, and without a doubt the brand lost a lot of goodwill. But despite all that public backlash, the brand held its course and that's pretty much where things are at right now. Um, I mentioned earlier this is the 2017 bottling. 2017 is probably the most sought after year for this expression. On one hand, 2017 was the last year where Billy Walker was active as the master distiller, and on the other hand we have the extra age as a result of the distillery closing. So. Pretty special stuff here. So with all that said, why don't we hop into a review of this one, see what it's all about, and in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So anything that came out prior to 2021 from Glendronic is going to be a craft presented whiskey. This one comes in at 46%, it's going to be non-chill filtered, and our color here is natural. Now you gotta like this color, I love it when sherry bombs look the part, this one definitely does. Uh, Glendronic label, I mean classic label here, but I do like the blue on this one. I prefer it to the red on the 12, the green on the 15, and even the gold on the 21. So it's a good look. I'm going to give this presentation score a 4 out of 5. So we have to look to our tin over there for non-shell filtered and natural color. It should be here on the label. Regardless, that's important because future Glendronics will be chill filtered, which means this is likely to be a collectible someday, especially given the fact that it's a Billy Walker product and that our whiskey inside the bottle is older than advertised. And you know, I actually have a few backup bottles of this stuff, and I bet if I sat on those bottles for another few years, I could make some real money there. It's almost a shame that I plan on drinking every last drop of them. Let's try our nose. This is the good stuff. Hmm. Okay, uh, full, deep, dark, rich sherry. Um, complex, a little bit dusty. Um, I'm getting dates, figs, raisins, uh, vanilla fudge, caramel, dark dried red fruits. And you know, there's a little bit of sulfur in here, but not that kind of gross eggy sulfur. This is like a flinty kind of sulfur and I love it. Now the palate. Mm. Mm. Okay, um, great oily texture, great mouthfeel here. Full mouth coating flavors gives us everything the nose promised. Um, I'm getting huge sherry, dark chocolate, treacle, um, fudge, dust, oak, figs, 
dates. Uh, you have like these dark tobacco, dark leather notes worked in here as well. And a little bit of that flintiness. Uh, this is complex and layered. And now our finish. Okay, uh, dark chocolate, wild cherries, wild raspberries, uh, matches. Uh, there's like dark roast coffee, like Americano coffee in here. Um, maybe some like jerked beef. What else? We have treacle. We have uh, more of those dark leathers, dark tobaccos, dark vanilla in here. Um, damp autumn leaves and maybe some like roasted almonds. Uh, our finish is medium to long in length, only slightly drying. So I'll start off by saying that I also have a bottle of the 2019 release on the go and I can confirm it's substantially different from what we're getting here with the 2017. So in a sense, I guess it kind of shows how Billy Walker and Dr. Rachel Barry just approached this whiskey differently. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it, our 2017 release here, the Billy Walker one, is the better whiskey, and I'll tell you why. Uh, while the 2019 release is older, it's a 23 year old, a lot of the character has been lost. Uh, I feel like modern Glendronics lean in a more sweet and obvious direction than these older ones do. And I know some of you might have seen my review of the 15 year old, the modern version of the 15 year old and I was way too generous with my score. That was one of the first few videos I put out on this channel. Um, I think the channel's come a long way since then. Some of those old videos make me cringe. I even went so far as to say that the new 15 is as good as the old 15, and it isn't. Anyway, back to our 18 here. Um, yeah, the Billy Walker version, I find to be more restrained and sophisticated. You get some of that flintiness that really helped define the character back in the day. And it's an aspect that's just totally missing from modern Glendronics, which is unfortunate. It could be called an imperfection by some. It does lean a little bit sulfury, a little bit flinty, and I get that. Uh, but I think it adds to the character. I think it's distinctive. It's measured. And it just makes it a little bit more of an interesting drink than, again, the more basic stuff that we get today. That being said, I do like the 2019 release. By no means is it a bad whiskey. But uh, the 2017 just gives me that old school Glendronic charm and profile and I didn't realize how much I missed it until I popped the 2019 bottle next to this one here. Anyway, I don't want to spend the whole review comparing the two bottles. Let's talk about this one specifically. Um, unsurprisingly, this is a very rich sherry bomb and it packs quite a bit of punch. It feels quite big for 46% ABV. Also, we do get the age here. It does taste a full 21 years old. We have these beautiful oaky notes in here that are really well interwoven with like the base spirit. So it's a very sophisticated whiskey. Also very Moorish. And I like how everything tastes dark in this. We have like dark berries, dark chocolate, dark leather, dark tobacco. Uh, I like the fudginess in here. I've already mentioned the flintiness. And this is a whiskey that never gets too sweet. We have those bitter chocolate notes and those roasted coffee notes that kind of hold that sweetness back. So the other bottle I've got on the go from 2019, it is a really good whiskey, but it's not as good as this. That one I'd probably score like 88 or 89, still super good. But this one, this one gets like a 92 for me. I almost wanted to go to 93, but 92 should do. Um, you know, I realized 92 is kind of a weird threshold. Whiskeys that I'd score around 92 or higher, that's where I start like closing my eyes when I drink. Sounds cliche, I know, but I do that sometimes if I'm having like really good food or really good whiskey. I just want to Kind of close my eyes and savor the moment. I do that for this one. And you know, it's really special stuff, not only because it's delicious, it's also just a really unique set of circumstances that came together that allowed this whiskey to exist. We have the distillery closure, which gives this its extra age. We have 2017 being Billy Walker's last year with Glendronic. And we have the brand deciding in 2021 to start chill filtering their whiskeys. Just makes every sip of this feel like a moment that can't and won't be repeated. And I know I'm getting a little bit romantic with this one, but I do feel like in this case it's warranted. Um, yeah. So this is for your sherry lovers out there. It's for your fans of Glendronic. It's for your fans of Billy Walker. And it's for just those of you who want to experience a special little slice of this distillery's history. Now, I don't want to get too negative here, but in my opinion, Glendronic peaked in the mid 2010s. I'm sure a lot of you out there agree with me. Uh, my 2017 bottling here is solid evidence for my case. And you know, it's a shame that I didn't pick up more backup bottles while this was still affordable because the value on this bottle is not getting any better with time. 
So yeah, prices on this are climbing, which is to be expected. This is definitely going to turn into a collectible bottle someday, uh, regardless of what year you've got. Um, for now, it is still pretty widely available, but pricing is pretty inconsistent. It's going to depend a lot on your retailer. But there is a chance that you can still find it at a fair price. I'm sure it's going to be a few dollars or pounds more than that original price. But as long as it's reasonable, I would say consider buying it. Um, again, it's a delicious whiskey, but it's also one that's only going to go up in price as time goes on. And not just because the age is older than advertised, not just because of the Billy Walker thing. This is non-chill filtered and it won't be moving forward. And that's important. So grab it while the price is at least kind of fair. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hit subscribe down below, click that little bell icon, and of course, smash the like. Now, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Glendronic 18 here? Do you have your own bottle? What year is it? How much did you pay for it? Give me all of the details. And finally, down in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.